with another episode of Team Mad Monarch Fishing Adventures. Well, as we were seeing in our last episode, uh, we were down Glen Lyon Dam. Um, beautiful, beautiful country down there, chasing the good old Murray Cod and Yellow Belly. But uh, yeah, we're back home and we're actually heading down, just back down to the Logan River. And uh, this time we're a bit of a bit of difference. We're actually going to chase some sharks. And why sharks, you ask? Well, why chase any species? It's you know, it's what you love. And uh, how I actually come about chasing sharks was I was down uh, the Logan River one day. I was about 15, just moved here from Rocky. And I was down on a jetty having a bit of a fish, just catching catfish and old brim. And this, this girl by the name of Steph walked down and uh, said, what are you catching? Uh, long story short, she goes, there's sharks in here. I was like, no, we had a bit of an argument. And um, yeah, she said, meet us down here at 7 o'clock tonight. And I did. And sure enough, within half an hour, she had a shark on board. And I was like, wow, that's insane. So, you know, I, I live for shark fishing now. And uh, not only are they they a great uh, fight on really light line, they're, they're top. I think they're one of the top quality you can get on the on the plate as long as you treat them right. But um, yeah, we're going to go head down the Logan River. I'm going to get down there about four o'clock in the morning and uh, fish a couple of hours just after after light, and hopefully uh, get one or two. Um, the sharks usually start running in early September. Uh, the big females. Um, in you know late August, uh, mid to late August, start coming into the estuaries and bays and dropping their pups, and of course the pups move down to the rivers for for safety and also uh, you know easy feed. Um, people don't realise that the bull sharks are quite aerobatical and they won't hesitate to get fully airborne and splash around on the surface and take some nice big runs, and they can be finicky like any other fish we've found down there we've had to a few different baits at a time have some mullet out have some eel out have uh, you know a bit of pike out or something and see which bait gets taken the most and adjust to that um, they, they they bite better on different tides different moon phases just like any other fish and you might think a shark has to eat anything out there but we find once the bait's been sitting in the river too long, they tend to go off, you know, well, that bait doesn't get picked up as much. So we tend to swap, you know, change our baits every 10 to 20 minutes, depending. Alright guys, well, uh, I'll see you in the morning, bright and early, and uh, hopefully we get into some. Cheers. Hopefully it's a uh, nice little bully. Use my light for a second. Unfortunately, it's a big catfish, but we're going to turn it into bait. Now, um, when handling these fish, you do have to be quite careful. Um, the old pectoral fins on both sides and a dorsal fin, but are pretty nasty spines on them. You know, you get uh, one of these to spike you and know all about it for a few hours. Find uh, if you do get spiked and uh, you've got some um, hot water. Basically, as you know, as hot as you can stand it within reason. You don't want to scald yourself, obviously. Just apply to the area, and it um, helps uh, get rid of the pain. But um, yeah, these uh, these are, are quite good bait, so we'll be keeping this one. Alright, guys, this is that catfish I caught earlier. Got to prepare it for bait. I like actually using Stanley knives. They're they're cheap, and uh, don't have to worry about them them going blunt change the blade and away you go. So basically 
know, knock the fillet off like a, a normal fish. Like so. Just uh, trim the, the pectoral fin off. That can go in the water for burley. And uh, basically, uh, with this size of fillet, I'll actually probably only just cut it in half. And uh, yeah, that, that there's a, a perfect little bait. All right, guys, another great bait. Um, one of my favorite baits, actually, down the Logan or the Brizzy River. As you were seeing a bit earlier on, just in the early hours of the morning, I caught that catfish, and that's a fillet off that catfish. So, fairly simple. You don't want to, with, with, your, with your standard J hooks, you usually go through your flesh, pull it through, and then back, you know, put it back down in the bait a bit further. But these circle hooks, simply once through like that. That uh, circle hook's nice and freely, freely moving. When the shark picks up, swims away with it, you know, that, that embeds perfectly in the corner of the mouth. Um, as you can see, it's it's nice bloody, uh, nice and nice bloody fillet, fairly oily, so it's uh, like a self-burling bait as well. We'll get this one into the water. All right, guys, when it comes to setting your drag for your sharks, um, I like to go fairly loose, as you can see, I mean, there's the tides taking it out there, that's about what, what, um, and how loose you want it. Now, what I like to do, if you just leave it like that, the tide will just keep taking your line out. So I get an eight ball or 10 ball, flatten it, and take my line out like that and just hook it under. As soon as that shark picks that line up, it comes from underneath the sinker and you're on nice loose drag. So there's a bit of a tip for you. Look, you could use a bait runner. Yes, it's more practical, but you know, a lot of people don't have bait runners out there. So you know, this is the most widely used reel. And that's what we're using today. Bit of uh, shark aerobatic, aer aerobatics there. Put on a decent fight this morning. Alrighty, so this is our first catch of this morning. Now as you can see with the circle hooks from Team Mad Mullet that we use, they hook perfectly inside of the jaw every time so it creates less harm on the fish and they're able to be released a lot easier as well when they're like this. So this fella's fairly green, he's only been literally taken the bait and gone out so he's got a fair bit of kick still with him. Alright guys, so we're going to put him back in, he'll swim away, or oh, she, hopefully become a bigger, bigger shark. Off he goes. So what we just want to do, flip the bail arm, bit of a wind, and lift your eye just slightly, and he just jumped out there again. Yep, another jump, a couple more. They're really, really active this morning, which is great to see. I've been finding been a little bit tentative in the way of finding the baits or getting attracted to the bait. So I've been replacing the bait every every 20 minutes just to freshen it up. You know, people think that because they're sharks, they'll eat 
absolutely anything out there. But, you know, I've found on numerous occasions that as soon as you put that fresh bait in the water, you'll get a run pretty, pretty soon after. There we go. That uh, circle hook, pinning it perfectly in the, the corner of the mouth there. Alrighty, so um, we're gonna keep this one for the table. Now, I think if you're gonna keep fish, it should be you know treated in the correct way. And what I've learned over the years is if you slit the throat with sharks, or cut the head off, they they um, die too much. Die, die too, uh, sorry, die too quickly, and um, you know they get that bad ammonia smell and taste to them. And the reason being is the blood holds all the ammonia. And of course, if you don't get a lot of the blood out of the system, you get that bad ammonia taste. Alrighty, guys. Well, we're back from the river. Uh, you would have seen down there we're using um, some wire trace. Well, we actually uh, have our own range of wire trace. Uh, Pre-made shark reach, we make everything by hand. We don't import pre-made pre stuff. It's all done by our own, um, either myself or, or Jamie. And um, the one in particular we were using down there was uh, 60 pound, 60. So these come in a pack of four, like so. These are uh, well, all our hooks we actually uh, import from the States. Needle, needle sharp, you know, super sticky hooks. Alrighty guys, that just about wraps it up. Uh, you have seen we are down the Logan River this morning uh, chasing the beautiful little bull sharks. Um, you've seen quite a few of them, you know, splash around the surface, getting a bit airborne. Uh, we showed you a few tips and tricks on how to uh, set drags, um, you know, different bait presentations. Alrighty guys, until next time, cheers and good luck.